This is part three of our series of videos on quantifiers. In this video, we're going to talk about how you get useful denials of propositions of the form for all x in u, p of x is true, and there exists an x in u such that p of x is true. So the answer is provided by theorem 131. This is the numbering in your text. It tells you that if you take a take the negation of the statement for all x in u, p of x is true, that's equivalent to there exists an x in u such that p of x is not true. And the negation of there exists an x in u such that p of x is true is equivalent to for all x in u, p of x is false. So in other words, this gives you a useful denial of the original proposition, and this gives you a useful denial of this original proposition. So in order to convince ourselves why this should be true, all we have to do is show that this proposition here has the opposite truth value of this proposition here. So let's suppose this is true. In other words, for every x in u, p of x is true. Well, then it's impossible for there to exist any x's in u for which p of x is not true, and therefore this must be false. If, on the other hand, this one is false, it's false that for every x in u, p of x is true. That must mean that there exists at least one x in u for which p of x is not true, and that means this is now true. Okay, so that tells you that these two have exactly the opposite truth values, and so that proves A. B is proved in a similar way. So this is an extremely useful result. Uh, we're going to find that we use this all the time when you're trying to do a proof by contradiction where you you want to prove that something like this is true, what you do is you take a useful denial of it and you show that that leads to a contradiction. So what I'd like to do for the rest of this video is just look at several examples, um, just simply um, doing these things, writing down these useful denials for specific examples. Notice the mechanics of it. What you do is if you want to negate this statement, you change the quantifier to the opposite quantifier. Of course, you leave um, the fact that it's an element of u alone, and then you negate the open sentence. Similarly here, you change the quantifier, but you negate the uh, open sentence. All right, so first example, I want you to tell me a useful denial for this statement, which says there exists a real number x such that x is bigger than or equal to 3. So we're going to make use of part b of the theorem, and you see what we have to do. We have to change the um, quantifier, and we have to negate this open sentence. So the answer is as follows. For every real number x, x is less than 3. Okay, you see I've changed the there exists to a for every. Of course, we leave this, leave this part alone. The negation of this is x strictly less than 3. Now, the original statement, there exists an x, a real number x, such that x is bigger than or equal to 3. Of course, that's a true statement, and therefore we should expect this to be a false statement, and you should check that, that that's really the case. Is it false that for every real number x, x is less than 3? Yes, of course it is. All right, let's try this one. I want you to write a useful denial of this statement here. There exists an integer x such that x is negative and x is bigger than or equal to 3. Of course, that original statement is false, so we should expect the, the useful denial that we write down to be true. Okay, so give that one a try. 
and um, I'll show you my result in a few seconds. Put the video on pause. So uh, I hope you all realize that you're going to change this there exists to a forever, and then you have to negate this, and that's a um, conjunction, and so you have to use De Morgan's, one of De Morgan's laws in order to do that. So the result is as follows. Okay, here's my answer. It's for every integer x, either x is bigger than or equal to zero, or x is less than three. Okay, so you see I've changed the there exists to a for every, and I've used De Morgan's law on this one. I've negated x less than zero, that's x bigger than or equal to zero. I've changed the and to an or, and I've negated x bigger than or equal to three, it's x less than three. And let's do this example. I want you to give me a useful denial of for every integer x, if x is odd, then x squared is odd. So give this one a try and um, put the video on pause and give it a try. Well, the thing you have to realize about this one is that when it comes time to negate this statement here, this open sentence here, that's a conditional and therefore um, you have to use the technique we've shown for negating conditionals or finding a useful denial of a conditional. The useful denial of P implies Q is P and not Q. So that then gives us the following for our answer. So you see that we've changed the quantifier and this is the negation of this open sentence here, P and not Q. So in words, the negation of, or a useful denial of, for every integer x, if x is odd, then x squared is odd, is there exists an integer x such that x is odd and x squared is even. We're using the fact that every integer is either even or odd. So note that when we take a useful denial, it is no longer a conditional.